Tonight, accumulating one to three inches, low 20. Tomorrow and tomorrow night, partly cloudy, just a few flurries, and a high tomorrow of 27 degrees. It's 24 degrees in downtown Buffalo. I'm Jim Fagan, KB Radio News. Time perfectly, I might add. I'm Dan Kelly, KB Radio Music at 6 o'clock, and time for hour number seven of our KB Reunion Replay. It continues tonight, brought to you by Glen Campbell Chevrolet, by Hector's Hardware, by the Bombay Bubble, by the Buffalo Dinette Center, by Western New York's two big record theater stores, and by Northtown Auto Companies, and the dealerships all on Sheridan Drive. The music and the fun, they're back on KB. Good evening and welcome to hour number seven of the KB Reunion Replay. As we go back for the free-for-all with Danny, Tom, Rod, and Joey, the topic of conversation is the career of Rod Roddy. I think it's nice of Joey to bring uh, all these pictures uh, that he brought with him. Yeah, he opens his wallet and shows you his kids. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> you know, Joey's kids. Yeah. <laughs> did you say this was free? Pardon me? Pardon me? I said, did oh. you say this was free? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, i got to be going, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> like the old days, all right? How did you... Are how you did paid? You, how did you <laughs> jump into the, the soap thing? I'm curious about that. Yeah, I was I very fortunate. I'm very, very fortunate to get Ooh. soap. I went out there and was really trying to find a job doing commercials and doing voice over, I finally got Pennzoil. Remember that? Your father's father's father asked for it. That ran on all the sports events for you. Right, right. And um, finally, Casey Kasem, who's a friend of mine, did uh, a pilot for Whit Thomas Harris. Tony Thomas was uh, Danny Thomas' son, Marlo Thomas' brother. And because of that, uh, Casey Joe Casey Donahue's sister-in-law. I brother died. Well, <laughs> Casey used to go with Marlo Thomas, so they were friends, yeah, yeah, years ago. And when he did this thing, when Casey came over as a favor and said, sure, I'll do the pilot for you. So he did the pilot. ABC bought the pilot. And before it went on the air, there was a lot of adverse publicity about how bad it was and, you know, the, you can't do this and it's sacrilegious. And then he got a lot of bad press before it went on the air with it. It was undeserved, of course, and later proved to be sort of silly. But you know how press people are. They really were drumming up some uh, interest in the show. So Casey decided because he had American Top 40 and other things on the air that he really didn't want to be involved. Stuff and yeah, he, he didn't want to be involved. He had a lot of business on the air. didn't want any sponsor coming to him saying, hey, what are you on this show for? So he said, no, I can't do it. And they started looking for a replacement. For, fortunately, I did a case alike. How did, a, how did you sound doing the Casey case alike? like? Well, I don't know whether I can do it anymore or not. Uh, well, Rod, you, you mentioned last night that you, you pretty much imitated his voice. I did. I went there and absolutely think, imitated oh, it because they wanted, they, wanted him to think, they wanted ABC to think it was uh, Casey doing it. Okay. So it started, this is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates, and these are the Campbells, and this is Soap. And that's the way it sounded by the end. I was, uh -huh. I was doing it. We had went through four different voice directors, and by the time we were finished with four years, it was me instead of Casey. But it was a big break for me. And after that, uh, I was able to... Uh, to get other commercials and things I couldn't have done before. Yeah, because you uh, you had identified at the end, and that's because you'd listen to something, and I always listen. I think we're in this business, so we have a tendency to say, "Is that such and such, or who is that? That sounds just like such what he finally got work. I can't well, believe I said, it. Rod Roddy is <laughs> finally <laughs> doing it. Yeah, and it said Rod Roddy, your announcer, is, whatever the line is, your announcer, Rod Roddy. Or yeah, it was all. They had a graphic credit on. on oh, that's uh, what it so, was. Okay. Yeah, which was good. Well, you did find work because uh, it was so surprising. Didn't we have a general manager who fired you who said you'd never work again? I think there was some, something included in there, yes, in the, <laughs> in the new departing remarks. <laughs> and he was all, almost, almost right. So you're doing, you're doing more than one uh, game show, right? Well, I've been very fortunate to do... Uh, I didn't do uh, Wheel of Fortune. That's the only one I haven't done. Well, you don't look I like Vanna. You can't. <laughs> I can't turn letters. What do you want? The, the uh, Pyramid I do occasionally with Dick Clark, $25,000 Pyramid. I did Pressure Luck for years with Peter Tamarkin. We'll be doing that again in syndication next year, I hope. Um, it was on until this fall. Pressure Luck is the name of that. I have Love Connection, or I did have Love Connection. Oh, Chuck Willery or the... With uh, Chuck Willery, yeah. right. That's yeah. uh, going any other... Tommy used to have a Love Fort Connection here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was on the phone earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Into its fourth year, and I had to uh, give up most of those dates because it conflicts with the tape schedule of Price is Right. Price is Right is... My, my, my major concern at the moment. You, you have priorities, there's no question about it. And you know you're starting to get successful when you can say to somebody, gee, I can't do it. I, uh, it I kills me. <laughs> yeah. It kills me to have it. to do that. Because for years, I slept out there trying to get anything I could get. You know, now they're coming to get calls. Says, can you come over? No. Bye. <laughs> but, but maybe I could work it out. <laughs> Are you still doing the record hops at the Lancaster Moose Hall? <laughs> I came back to check on that as long as I'm here. <laughs> I miss the Roddy Hops, I must tell you. I really miss that. You know, wearing the coat over my shoulders, walking in, checking the gate, walking out. I like that. Yeah, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> the entrepreneur in you. <laughs> 
It was wonderful. I met so many marvelous people here. I had more fun in Buffalo and the surrounding area than I've ever had in my life. Oh, really? During the five years that I was here, and I have very fond memories of Buffalo. I, I was cold the whole time I was here. <laughs> but I had a great time. The people here are your show. <laughs> the people are sensational in Buffalo, and nowhere else can you get beef on wick. That's right. That's now true. chicken wings since those days is chicken. Do you know in Bangkok last year I was in Bangkok and they were talking about Frank and Teresa's anchor bar <laughs> <laughs> and chicken in wings in Thailand, right? <laughs> More of the KB reunion after this time off. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hey, look. Look what Joey's doing now. Hey, look at that rod. He sure looks heavy, doesn't he? Whoa. If you're enjoying the rebroadcast of the KB Reunion Weekend, you'll be excited to hear that you can also purchase a two-hour video air check of the entire weekend. For your copy, send $39 in check or money order to KB Reunion Video, 695 Delaware Avenue, Buffalo, New York, 14209. Be sure to specify VHS or beta, and please allow four to six weeks for delivery. See what it was really like for yourself. It's more fun in video from Buffalo's legend, KB Radio. Inside the Ramada Inn, 6643 Transit Road in Williamsville. Every Saturday night, rock and roll and reminisce with all the classics from the 50s and 60s. A night of the greatest music ever, served up just the way you like it. All your favorites. Enjoy Western New York's premier oldies night with free hors d'oeuvres, $1 drafts, and the nicest crowd anywhere. Come on, make the scene and be a part of the best oldies night in the area. Only at the bubble. 6643 Transit Road, just north of Thruway Exit 49 in the Ramada Inn. And Sunday at the Bombay Lamp Company inside the Ramada, kids eat free. That's right, for every adult meal purchased, one child eats free from the children's menu. It's a great way to take the whole family out for a great, fantastic meal. So remember, it's a Saturday night oldies party every Saturday at the bubble, and Sunday kids eat free at the Bombay Lamb Company, both inside the Ramada Inn, 6643 Transit Road in Williamsville. You know, it's not easy being the big kid on the block. Why, with all the competition trying to move in on us, you would think we're selling cars or appliances at dealer cost. At Record Theater, we just continue to provide our customers with Western New York's largest selection and lowest prices on your kind of music seven days a week. From bestsellers to hard-to-find recordings on albums, cassettes, and compact discs, including the music you hear on this station. Many selected on advertised new releases are on sale starting at $5.99 each and every week. Most single pop compact discs start at $12.98 every day. Classics just $1 more. So next time you're in a buying mood, sure, shop the competition first. And then make your final choice the record theater. You won't be disappointed. Then you'll know why the big kid on the block takes all the heat. The record theater, where you don't have to wait for a sale. At 1800 Main Street and in the University Plaza, Main at Kenmore Avenue. Let's go back to the free-for-all on the KB Reunion and a song that Danny and Joey made famous. Hello. Never. Hello. Uh, Dan, well, you, are, you are a co-singer and co-writer of a great hit, a great hit and memorable tune of all time called Rats in My Room. Yep, I was one of the very best. You were the other one. This show is on the air coast to coast, and we're going to play the record. Well, listen, Joe, I'll tell you something. I, I'm so thrilled and happy to be on this nationally syndicated show and being heard in well, you, Los Angeles. In, in Buffalo, they certainly know what the syndication is. <laughs> and as soon as I get that $800 check in the mail no no it's 35 yeah, 35 35 dollars that's all you're gonna hang up joe see if it sounds like i'm hanging no 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 don't wait i understand that you have a weather show that's true are you preparing it now seriously to go on uh, yes you're interrupting my preparation of the weather show it's preparation w what does a weatherman do besides preparation w before he goes on the air actually what we do is we call the private weather service they tell me what words to say and i say them. i'm going to play rats in my room you play it i love to hear it do you have anything to say about it before you run? Yes, I do. Joe, if this song does to the rest of the nation what it did to Buffalo. So long, America. Rats in my room. I am bothered by those rats in my room. By those dirty little rats in my room. I can't stand rats in my room. I am bothered by a flying 
I'm Dan Never at the WWKB in Buffalo. Rod Roddy's here, Joey Reynolds, and Tom Shannon. Uh, Jay Nelson was here, Jungle Jay. He had to leave to get back to Toronto, catch a flight. We appreciate all let's, the Let's efforts. talk about everybody who didn't show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about Jefferson K. Where is that door? Where's that memo that he had about the lunchroom? Remember, and he had, and he had it notarized, too. Yeah, this is a memo that went around when Jefferson K. was the yeah. program director. Jeff K. Here, listen to this. It says, to all radio employees from Jeff K. on February 7, 1973. Dateline. He says, obviously, this morning's security measures, uh, in caps, the presence of a security guard in the newsroom, did not deter the theft of two more lunches from the newsroom. <laughs> Therefore, I will have to resort to more severe and stringent measures to preserve the integrity of the possessions of the newsmen. <laughs> two fingers for this memo. <laughs> the security guard posted this morning will be held over until such time as the thefts have stopped and the rapacious purloining pickaroon brought to heel. <laughs> In addition, as a further security measure to forestall any continued Corsair capers by the morning footpad, special credentials will be issued to those persons whose normal duties make them privy to the newsroom. The security agent will be instructed to admit only those personnel bearing the credentials that are embossed with the corporate seal. Corporate I give you exhibit A. Okay. Any further incurrence by this Dick Turpin of the morning will be met with harsher and more severe action on my part, including banishment from the station until such time as the general manager returns from his heavy schedule of business in Florida. <laughs> Thank you for your <laughs> Who, was, place, who was the guy? I mean, what, what was this? Is it a I was stealing uh, lunches. Yeah. Yeah. And he, put, he actually put a guard out there, and uh, he was from uh, Hertz rent a guard and uh, not the brightest individual, and I told him that there was a call. Someone in his family had to reach him right away, but the, the, only, the only phone he could use was in the front of the building. So he walked away from the newsroom, and I stole another lunch. Just for two lunches? Yeah, of course. Where's Andy Bova? What happened to him? I don't know. What it, I know his gas Andy station or the... Sinclair Station. Yeah, right across the street from uh, the old radio station. Yeah, WKBW. Back in the truck, I to get my rent car. Mm -hmm. What did we... What, what, what was that? An old stable? WKBW? Yeah. The radio station? It was, it, it was a carousel. It wasn't too stable when I was there. Uh, <laughs> it was very stable when you were you there. You were never stable when you were there. <laughs> <laughs> but next door to uh, to the Churchill Tabernacle, because it was WKBW's well-known no, Bible witness. Word, right? Well, witness, yeah. Yeah, they go back to that now, can't they? Play uh, religious music? <laughs> we, we're going to next week. I know. No. So, <laughs> Dr. Churchill owned the station, and he decided there was more money in uh, in radio than there was in churches. Isn't that right? So he converted the church into a TV station, <laughs> wasn't it? Something like that. Sure. <laughs> he left, left the audience in there, and then he found out he was wrong, because there definitely is more money in churches than there is in television. <laughs> well, do you remember the first days? I took over uh, Buffalo Band's dance from Rick Azar. Rick was the, the sure. first guy on television. First guy heard by Channel 7. Channel 7. First voice First voice. And I think I was probably one of the, maybe the fifth or eighth voice, because there were other people who were hired in between. I can't remember all their names. They were here and going. But do you remember, and it was that way for a long time, the audience part of it was part of uh, the tabernacle itself. Do you remember yes, that? Where you did the, sure. the studio was down here. It was a sawed-off church. That's what it was. In yeah. half, they moved this part, and there was, you could go in just like you were going to work. Short people? <laughs> a sawed-off church? Well, Dr. Churchill, uh, one day I, uh, we were going to do a Christmas reading. Remember, Roddy, we had a Christmas show we were putting together, and we needed the Bible. Oh, I hated those every year, yeah. So I, I went over and got the Bible, <laughs> and I borrowed it from Dr. Churchill. He was the only guy we thought on the premises who would have one. And he pulled it out from under his drawer there, and he blew the dust off it. And I said, what do you do, keep that around for laughs? <laughs> I mean, uh, 